This is the Mora Eldris. Nice little knife. At least that's what I thought when I bought it. If you're interested to hear my thoughts on it now, keep watching. Yes, the Mora Eldris. I've had this since Christmas, just about six months ago. I did purchase this myself with a little bit of Christmas money given to me by my kids because, you know, I wanted this for a long time. It's, it was just looked like a nice handy little knife to have. It just seemed a little bit expensive, but when you've got some money to burn from your kids at Christmas, why not? Of course I did. So, okay, what I thought I would do is give you just some information on the Moore Eldris, if you're not familiar with it, such as its specifications, that type of thing. And then I'm gonna talk about my experiences with it, and I'm gonna show you an alternative from Mora that I think is much better choice. Right, so I chose the Mora Elnis with the orange handle, but you, if you look at these, you know that there's all kinds of handles. This is burnt orange, and it, I guess the only reason I chose this is because it's burnt orange. It's nice and bright. It's a small knife. If I drop it, I want to be able to find it again. So yeah, that's the reason I chose this. Now I'm going to show you the sheath. I'm going to show you the accessory pack. And then the reason I'm showing you that is because you can buy just the knife with the sheath, or you can buy the knife and sheath with an accessory pack that comes at an additional cost. So to start with, let's just show you the sheath, put the knife back in the sheath. So what is the accessory pack? Basically it's this retention strap. Uh, that's the first thing. You don't need it, on, honestly. Now, I thought I might need it just because I thought that over time, the retention on the sheath might give away. And it, since it's hanging upside down around your neck, it'd be nice to have that little bit of added security to go along with this. And I guess that's still true, but I don't know that it was worth the money that I paid for it. And I'll explain what I mean, especially since if you're at all crafty, at all handy, you can make one of these at least as good as this, probably better than this. Let me just snap that up. The other thing that came with the accessory pack is this small ferrocerium rod. And I just have it looped over the neck cord right now, as you can see. I just have it set up for neck carry because, of course, that's the way these are intended to be carried. All right, let's just bring the knife back out. I'm going to bring the sheath and accessory kit back into the picture in a minute after I give you the specifications on this knife because I want to share with you the price. All right, let's go over the specs for this. And, of course, all this information is in the video description below. Blade length. 2.3 inches, 59 millimeters, very short, yes it is. Overall length of this knife is 5.6 inches, 143 millimeters. It's just a small knife, right? But that's, we know that going in. Blade material, 12C27 stainless steel, good stainless steel, entry level in many ways, but still a high quality stainless steel, easy to sharpen, takes a really good edge, and of course does not rust, unless you really abuse it. Wait for this. 2.82 ounces, less than three ounces. Yes, it's a small light knife, which is 80 grams. Now, overall weight, if you add in the sheath, is 4.4 ounces or 125 grams. That is the uh, hardened plastic material that they're all the handles are made for the mowers with that rubber over mold, a bit of a softer rubber over mold. TPE is what they refer to it as. Okay. So that's the knife. Now, what's wrong with it? Well, let's talk about what's good about it. First off, it's small and lightweight. I know I'm repeating myself, but there's a couple key factors here. Lightweight, oh yeah. Now, you know, everybody can agree upon that if you're wearing it around your neck, the lighter, the better. But it is small, very small. And that's gonna play into my opinions on it in a minute. What else does it have? It has the dual grind, like the cans ball, and a few of the others. So it is all Scandinavian, but it's higher towards the front. And that's just fine. It depends on what you're cutting. If you're doing nothing but woodworking, then do you want nothing but a Scandinavian grind, zero grind. But if you're doing any work that we need finer edge work with, then this dual grind is really, really nice, like food. And I did work f with food with this to the extent that I could. And uh, okay, so the nice thing about the sheath, I guess, is the fact that you can insert it either way. So I'm a right-hander, so it goes in that way, but if I was a left-hander, you just flip the knife over and it goes in the other way. So it's nice that way. And of course, it is made in Sweden like all the other Mora knives. So um, yeah, it's, it's a nice little knife. Now, let me just give you the prices on this. So if you were to buy this knife, with this sheath, without the accessory kit, at least right now in Canada, you pay $41.50. 
okay, that's not exorbitant, but it is a little bit high. But if you buy the accessory kit, which is nothing more than that retention strap and the ferrocerium rod, you're adding another $36.95 Canadian, at least where I purchased mine. That's $78.75 Canadian. Okay, two questions. Is it a functional knife? And even if it is, is it worth that money? Well, let me just bring in an alternative to you and we'll talk about the price of that knife. All right, if you had watched my video or you want to go back and watch my video on my collection of Mora knives, I talk about this knife in this. This is an old, and I mean, I probably had it 12, 15 years, Mora 510. And they're almost identical to what was known as the Mora 511, except that the 511 has a finger guard here, whereas the 510 doesn't. Now, they still make the 511 like this with the finger guard, but they don't make the 510 looking like this. So we're going to refer to this and in comparison with the 511, the Mora 511. Okay, so uh, here's the kicker right here. Cost, $16. That's it, $16 for this knife, as opposed to $78, almost $79 for the other one. Let's bring the other knife back in so I can do a side-by-side -side as we go along. I think there's one thing that I didn't mention about the Mora Eldris, and it's the same for the Mora 511, and that is the blade steel thickness, which is at 0 0.08 of an inch or two millimeter. Yeah, they're thin, they're thin, but for what they're intended as crafting knives, 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 then that's actually better. You don't want too thick a knife for crafting, carving, that type of thing. You're not beating this through wood. You can, within reason, but that's not what they're intended for. So basic specs on this knife. Blade length, 3.6 inches, 91 millimeters. Overall length, 8.11 inches or 206 millimeters. As I mentioned, two millimeter blade thickness. Weight on this, 3.8 ounces or 109 grams. Now, I'm, I'm not gonna give you the sheath weight because if you watch the other video, you know I lost the sheath a long time ago and had to make a sheath out of it, out of a little bit of PVC, thin weight PVC. So that's what I have for it now. But if you look online, and I will provide the links to where you can look at this online, you'll know it has a, just a simple little plastic sheath. That can be set up to worn on your belt on a button or even around your neck with a length of cord, which is a knife this small, this light, that's the ideal way to carry it is around your neck, at least I think. Okay, so let's just do some comparisons. First off, look at the blade length. It is almost twice the length of the Eldris. That's significant and I'll tell you why in a minute. Handle length. Handle length is, you know, maybe one quarter or to one-fifth longer. All right, so not really big, really significant, unless you happen to have big hands like I do. Let me just show you how this holds in my hand. So here's the Moore Eldris. I, I just, I don't know if I can get my hand turned around like this, just can barely get my baby finger around it. More often than not, it's not really around it at all. However, I can do a full grip on the 511. As you can see, I still have some pommel showing out. Now, it's still a small, small handle, no question there. It is small and it's hard plastic. There's no forgiveness, no little rubber for texture, but we'll talk about that at another time and how you can improve the grip on these knives if you really feel the need to. Oh, there is a couple more things that's worth mentioning. One of the things you're paying for with the Aldris is the attention Moore gives to detail and finishing this off. So the spine on this knife is a perfect 90 degree. This is a great fire steel striker. Expensive fire steel striker, but it will strike a fire steel and throw a lot of sparks. This one, not so much. I had to take a file to it and run it down. But once I did, and, and here's the thing, I wasn't concerned about ruining a $16 knife. But once I ran the file down this, it throws sparks equally as well. So what am I take on the two knives? Well, this knife is too small. I said small knife in the beginning, and that's exactly where I stand on this. It's just too small. It'll do little things. It'll cut open packages if you wear it around home as an EDC. It'll do little things like opening up meal bags and like that in the wood. It will do some carving in a minute. I'll just show you how well it feathers. It will feather, but it's not a fun thing to feather with, at least compared to uh, some bigger bushcraft knives. But it's just too small. It has no reach. Things like cutting food and the like, it's too small. Yes, you could drag it across your food, but it still feels just too small. Now, 
Not that this is a big knife, but with a blade that's almost twice the length, there is that much more usefulness to the length of this blade. And this is no small thing. If you're looking at these as carving knives, which is a lot of what you do with your smaller bushcraft knives, look at the tips. That makes a huge difference. The tip on the 511 is much finer, allows me for more control, smaller cuts, infant control compared with this one. Now, this is a strong tip, but it is blunt by comparison. The belly is much rounder up towards here. You can still work with it, don't get me wrong. It's just much easier to work with this. All right, so that's the side-by-side -side comparison. This knife cost three times, four times this knife. Yeah, I don't know, but how do they perform? Let's do a quick demonstration of each. All right, so a split of dry, dry maple, uh, rock maple. Um, I'm just going to just run it down a few times to create a few feathers. I'm not creating a full-on feather stick with this, but I just want to show you that it will do some feathering. I don't let them run off or fall off. Feels like I run out of blade. Right now I'm pushing the blade. That's not the ideal way to use a knife when you're creating feathers. You really actually want to slice. So in other words, pull the knife across like that. You get a finer angle when you do that, it's just geometry, and you get better curls. But with a knife this short, it just feels like I'm running off before I get any length of curls. So the tendency is, is to just run it straight down the knife. I mean, it'll still work. You just can't, don't have, you can't get the same length of curls you can with a longer knife running it at an angle. Of course, then again, with all that thinness, or that little bit of knife, or what should I say, the thin stock on this, that allows you to push, the cut the wood a lot easier than you would on one four millimeters thick, which is virtually twice this. So, yeah, okay, it'll curl, but not as well as a four, four and a half inch belt knife will. As you can see, I'm still push cutting, I'm trying to, fo let's see if I can forward cut, forward if I forward push and slice at the same time, at least I have my hand in the guard to stop it. If I pull, I'm running off of the stick way too soon. So, trying to forward. I'm just not getting long curls. But curls nonetheless, right? Okay, now let's just turn the stick around. Pick up the 511. Same stick. Big knot there, though. Maybe I'll work on the outside edge just for demonstration purposes. All right, that's a push cut, but make, I think I'm running a little bit out of frame here. Okay, that was a push cut curl, but I just wanted to establish my base so the rest of them don't fall off. All right, now let's see if I can start making some finer curls, pulling the knife down at an angle. So why am I using this as a demonstration, making feathers with small knives like this? Especially when you have, and I carry a larger belt knife that's better suited to this than this is. Just to show that you can. I mean, maybe what you paired it with is a small knife with a big large knife or a small knife with an ax or a hatchet. And then that's what you're using this knife for, is the small tasks like feather sticking and maybe striking your ferrous cerium rod, maybe food prep, those types of things. Um, there is just a minimum size to do this with. And the Eldris, to excuse the pun, doesn't cut it. Not that I like using this because of its small size. Blade length, blade shape, perfect as far as I'm concerned. It's just a traditional Puko length and size. Pretty much a traditional Puko in every bit of its design made with more modern materials. But, you know, yes, I have XL to double XL hands. So holding on to a knife like this for a length of time can be tiring, but for a short period of time, for a couple of sticks, doing some carving, oh yeah, that's, that's easy enough. Now, another one is making a notch. All right, easy enough with this knife. Let's roll it over. Maybe I'll clear off some of those feathers. 
and find a half decent spot for doing that about right here. You know, I'd say they're about the same. Honestly, for that type of a task, they're about the same. But here's where they start to really show their difference. And this is gonna be hard because I pick up some light here. Uh, I'm not carving a spoon, but one of, the, one of the ways of holding a spoon blank, if you're trying to carve it and get in tight to the curves, is against your chest. You're not gonna hurt yourself because your hand can't get to your chest if you're pulling the knife and drawing it along its length like this. So uh, I'm running out of length just wants to run off of the stick but it's doing some of the work the problem would be if I was working in a spoon and it was right here was the bowl and I'm trying to work into it that's where this fine tip comes in now same deal I have more blade to run down the outside as I carve and a much finer tip. So for things like pushing into a corner, all right, just that much easier to do with this knife. Okay, I think I've ranted on long enough about the less than fully useful little Mora Eldris. Let's wrap this video up. All right, I know it came across as being quite critical of the Mora Eldris. And, uh, you know, when I opened this video up, uh, I said that I thought this knife was a nice little knife when I bought it. And I still do. It's a nice little knife. Now, how many times have I said that during this video? Because really, that's the key operating word for this knife. It's little. It's not so much the handle, but it's the blade length. It kind of limits you to the type of cutting tasks you can do with it. If your cutting tasks that you think you're going to be using for are that's all you need, okay, then it's not that bad, functionally that is. However, this knife with almost twice the uh, blade length can do all the tasks this knife, but more for almost the same weight, making this a much more versatile knife for many more functions that you're likely to do out in the woods at a fraction of the cost. So I guess put that out there. This actually, I don't know how much I paid for it, how many years ago, but like I said, they're about $78 now and they do come with a sheaf. You don't have to make your own like I did. This knife, $41.50 just for the knife with a sheath, but if you want the accessory kit, you add another what, $37, making it a $78, almost $79 knife. These are Canadian prices. I, I recognize that. So would I buy this again? No, I wouldn't. No, <laughs> there's a lot of other knives. In fact, I'll be doing a review on another knife shortly, almost exactly the same price, actually a little bit cheaper, and it is a true bushcraft knife. That's the Mora Bushcraft Black. All right, so that's my final closing thoughts on the Mora Eldris. If you, your thoughts differ or if you have any questions, please put them in the comments section below. As I mentioned, I'll put all the information and links for both of these knives, the 511, not the 510, because it's not the same. There is a 510, by the way, it just looks different than this one does, and you can look them both up. They're both very inexpensive. As I mentioned, they'll be in the video description. Once more. Get out and explore. Take that path less travel because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.